The Ballad of Never After, Chapter 7 It would have been easy for Evangeline to simply stand there, to let Marisol enter the solarium without warning her. Marisol's history with Luz was her own fault. She put Luz under a love spell to steal him from Evangeline. Then, when Luz had been disfigured by a wolf attack, Marisol had rejected and shunned him. Luz deserved the chance to confront her. But Evangeline knew that wasn't what he wanted from Marisol. Evangeline felt a twist in her gut. I know what you're thinking, Jack said, but some people get things because they deserve them. Evangeline knew he was right. Marisol was no innocent. She'd done terrible things, but that didn't mean that Evangeline could just let Luz kill her. Before she lost her resolve, Evangeline stared down the royal hall. Marisol blanched as she neared. Then the girl's eyes went wide as Jax came up beside her. She slowly took in every inch of him, from his polished boots to his brackish half cape, to the cruel line on his mouth. Marisol had met Jax on Knocked and Never Ending, and been instantly enthralled. He had dark blue hair then, nothing like the brilliant gold that crowned him now. But she clearly recognized him. His, her breath went shallow, excited. Then her eyes hardened and she glared at Evangeline, probably remembering the way she warned the Marisol away from him. You are such a little hypocrite. Told you she deserves it, Jack thought at Evangeline. She ignored him, pushing aside his words along with a bite of her sister's voice. All she had to do was warn her, then hopefully she'd be done with her for good. You need to get out of here, Evangeline said. Leave Wolf Hall in the north, Marisol snorted. You can't make me go anywhere. You're just a ruined girl with a dead husband. The servants might call you princess, but most of them still think you murdered your prince. Evangeline flinched. Jax grounded his jaw. You're a nasty piece of work. I'm just telling the truth. So am I, Jack said. Marisol's cheeks went bright red, but she lifted her chin with a hofty sniff. I'm going to meet Prince Lucian now. If you go through these doors, you will never come back out again, Evangeline said. Marisol rolled her eyes. Is that really the best you can do? It's the truth. Prince Lucian is really loose, and he's a vampire. Evangeline wanted to scream. But she feared saying the word vampire would only work against her. Jax had once told her that all the stories about vampires were cursed. But instead of warping the truth like the other cursed tales of the North, stories about vampires manipulated the way people felt. No matter what a person was told about vampires, they would always be intrigued instead of horrified. Marisol spun on her heel and strolled through the solarium doors. Evangeline felt a brief flicker of indecision as she turned toward Jax. Before she thought her feelings for Marisol were complicated, but they were actually very simple. Either Evangeline really wanted for her stepsister was an apology. She wanted her to feel some regret or remorse for the selfish things she'd done. She didn't want her dead. And yet, the only way to save her now was to be asked Jax for help. Evangeline swallowed. Something metallic coated her tongue. It tasted like a price she didn't want to pay. She reminded herself that she could not trust Jax. She could not be tricked into believing he was her friend or make the habit of turning to him for help. She would just do it this one more time. Please, Evangeline whispered to Jax, use your powers to stop her. He raised one imperious brow. You asking me for a favor? I'm asking you to show some humanity, which actually felt almost as dangerous. If Jax did this for free, it would be easier to once again think he was something he was not. But from the unfeeling look on his face, that clearly wouldn't be an issue. You're asking for the wrong thing, he said. The guards reached for the solarium handles. Evangeline's insides tightened. If Jax wasn't going to stop Marisol, then she was going to have to try again. She didn't know what she was going to do, but she stared toward the solarium after her stepsister. Don't. Jax grabbed her hand, his grip firm and cold. Evangeline started to pull away. But then she saw Marisol. One moment her stepsister was at the doors and then she was backing away, flitting like a frightened bird with thin brown hair whipping around her face. She tripped on the hem of her skirt, stumbling a little against the stone floors before breaking into a run down the opposite side of the castle hall. Jax had to use his powers to save her, after all. Evangeline's shoulders felt lighter, but her chest felt tighter. She waited for Jax to say that she owed him now. He already dropped her hand but he was eyeing the last remaining broken heart scar on her wrist. That remainder of the other debt that she hadn't finished paying, the final kiss she owed. Jax hadn't mentioned the debt in a while, but she felt a rush of fresh nerves as she wondered if he would collect soon. If this final kiss was 
what he referred to when he promised earlier that she could really start to hate him. Hello cleared his throat. Pardon me, your highness. Startled, Evangeline leaped further away from Jax. She wasn't sure when the guard had crept up, but one look at Havelock while we gone face, and she knew that she didn't want to hear what he had to tell her. Not now. Evangeline didn't think she could hardly handle much more. She wasn't even sure she was doing a very good job of handling what she'd just been dealt. If not for Jax, Marisol would be dead right now. Evangeline didn't regret asking for him to save her, but she couldn't ask him for more. She needed to get away from him and from everything else. She'd been trying so hard to do the right thing, to make the noble choice to be the hero, and she was exhausted. Jax often told Evangeline that heroes didn't get happy endings, but in that moment, Evangeline wasn't looking for happiness. She just wanted a break, a moment of peace before being confronted with another catastrophe. Was that too much to ask? She looked at her bandaged hand now. The wound she shared with the pole had stopped bleeding, and the rest of her, aside from her battered heart, was sound. Therefore, Apollo wasn't in any immediate danger. Whatever Havlock had wanted from her could wait. I'm leaving, she announced, and I don't want anyone to follow me. She didn't know exactly where she was going yet, but she could figure that out later. Maybe she'd go visit Lala and her new fiancé and eat cake until the world turns sweet again, or perhaps she would just hop onto a horse until she rode herself into a new story. All she knew was that she had to get out of Wolf Hall. Evangeline had always thought the great northern castle was magical, and it was, but it was full of the wrong sort of magic. Nearly every single memory she had inside those stone walls was tainted with some sort of curse or betrayal. Her black and white skirts swished around her ankles as she turned away from both Havelock and Jax. Your Highness, Havelock marched after her. You can't simply leave. I'm sorry, she cut in. I appreciate you, Havelock, but I can't handle more bad news at this peculiar minute. So unless you're going to tell me which granting unicorns have arrived, I need a moment, possibly quite a few moments, to myself. She quickened her steps to almost a run. Her skirts were heavy, but her boots were blessedly sturdy, making it easy to take a flight of stairs and hurry down the hall to a door that led outside. The air was cold as she burst into the northern night, canopied by a sky of foreign constellations that she had yet to learn. Maybe she had just returned to the south and to her home in the Meridian Empire. She could leave the north and all its curses. But even if she thought it, Evangeline knew that wasn't what she wanted. She didn't want another story. She wanted to fix this story. She wanted to save Apollo. She wanted a chance to know him when he wasn't under a spell. She wanted to believe that their story wasn't over. She wanted the happy ending that she'd come here for. Evangeline ventured deeper into the garden, frozen flower petals crackling under her shoes. Then she heard another pair of footsteps, louder than hers, but growing closer. The broken heart scar on her wrist started burning. Sometimes she was able to ignore the sensation, but right now, it was stronger than usual, as if Jax wanted her to know that he was inescapable. Evangeline hastened her pace, hoping to lose him in the shadows of the darkened garden, but Jax didn't stop following her, and she had a feeling he would never. She almost laughed at the idea that she thought she could run away from him, that he would simply let her go. Evangeline forced herself to stop beneath the amber glow of a garden lamp, shaped like a bowing flower. Cold bit her cheeks and licked her hands, but Jackson didn't so much a shiver as he strode toward her, indifferent to the bitter air that froze the tips of her hair and lashes. He slid through the icy night like a slow falling star, all unearthly eyes and graceful moves. She folded her arms across her chest, which probably didn't look as forceful as she wanted with Jack's handkerchief still wrapped around her hand. One more reminder of how he helped her even if it was with another problem he possibly created. Jax, leave me alone. He took another slow step. You're a little scary right now. Did you know that? She glared at him. That was a compliment, little fox. He reached toward her and brushed a lock of hair behind her ear with one feather light touch. Butterflies moved inside her, different from the ones that she felt whenever she saw Apollo, because Apollo didn't frighten her. What are you doing? She squeaked. Jax chuckled. If I knew all it took to scare you was a little touch, I would have tried this sooner. His fingertips played with her earlobe. Evangeline pulled away, almost stumbling on the frozen ground. She hated that her legs were so unsteady. The one small touch could affect her so. 
Even seconds later, the ground was still shuddering. It didn't feel quite like a true tremor, more like a shiver moving across the garden, and suddenly, Evangeline feared it wasn't just from her wobbly limbs. Outside the circle of garden lights above them, the world was darker, curly mist instead of shrubs and trees. As Evangeline looked out, she had the same prickly sense she got in nearly a week ago when Jackson followed her into the library. Someone was watching. I think someone else is here, she whispered. Her eyes strained until she saw a figure appear on the distance. It was far enough away that it could have just been a trick in the shadows, but it looked to Evangeline like a rider astride a horse. Jax frowned. It's probably the gossip monger from the scandal sheets. But Evangeline didn't think so. The horsemen looked broader and stronger and familiar. She took a step forward into the shadows. What are you doing? Jax asked. Don't worry, Evangeline replied. I'm sure whoever it is couldn't be more dangerous than you. But the truth was, something about the rider caught at her. The only other one who could make her feel anything like this was Jax. The broken heart scar on her wrist tied her to him, tingling and burning and reminded her that he was inescapable. With the rider, it was different. There was no tingle. It was more like a tether, pulling her toward him with an invisible cord. Snow fluttered around her shoulders as she continued down the moonlit path. Leaves rustled, the horse whined, and a shaft of moonlight lit the horseman, enough for Evangeline to see clearly the familiar edges of her handsome face. Apollo. The Ballad of Never After, Chapter 8. Time stopped, or maybe it was just Evangeline's heart. Apollo was awake, fully awake. This must have been what Havelock was trying to tell her. Evangeline felt an impossible burst of hope. When she looked in the prince's eyes, they were no longer red, unlike the last time she'd seen him. Apollo appeared fully in control of himself. Beside her, Jax was nightmare stiff, and she couldn't help but smile. With Apollo awake, all of Jack's leverage over her was gone. She needed to open the valley arch. The horror was over. At least Evangeline wanted to believe it was. Apollo's stiffness as he sat atop his horse was entirely unreadable. He wasn't riding away from her, but he wasn't moving toward her. And suddenly, Evangeline thought of another memory, one she'd have loved to bury forever. Right after Jack's love spell had been lifted before Jack's poison had taken effect, Apollo had been furious and devastated, and he likely hadn't forgiven her yet. Little fox, Jax thought, I think we should leave. Not yet, she thought back. But you can go. Jax gritted his teeth. Then she heard his voice in her head again, softer this time, as if he were trying to use his powers to conceal her. This is a terrible idea, a dangerous idea. You need to leave the garden now. Evangeline shut him out. She was determined to hope for the best. Maybe Apollo hadn't forgiven her for the love spell, but the fact that he was here made her think that perhaps he wanted to. I'm so glad you're awake. Apollo took a deep breath, exhaling a small cloud of white. Gods, you're beautiful. The words had never felt so powerful. She took a tentative step closer. Don't, he said harshly. Evangeline's heart fell. Apollo raked a hand through his dark hair. I'm sorry. I, I really don't want to hurt you. I just... He paused, and through a shaft of moonlight, she could see pain distort his expression. It was raw and wounded and like nothing she'd ever seen on his face before. This was not the same prince she had married. The prince had a charmed existence. He'd been protected by the guards, sought after his subjects, and more than a little in love with himself. When they first met, she would have described him as gallant, a picture perfect, but now Apollo had a past, a love spell that repented his world, another curse that almost taken his life. He somehow fought against the second curse and trumped. But from the look on his face, it still haunted him. Apollo took a deep breath, looking torn as he said, I don't know how much time I have, but I want you to know I heard you every day that you came into my chamber. I heard your voice through all the fog asking me to try. His horse trotted up one step closer. Evangeline felt another flicker of hope. It was then she realized that Apollo looked the same as he had on the night he proposed. He'd also been on the horse at first. If he'd been dressed much as he was now, a little rugged, save for the elegant golden arrow shot to his back. He'd been the archer that night. She'd been his fox, from the ballad of the archer and the fox, her favorite childhood tale, and she dared to wonder if this was the case again. 
that he was making another grand gesture at an attempt to starting over. Does this mean you forgive me? she asked. I want to, Apollo said, but his words were oddly tight. Little fox? Jack growled in his head, but she didn't hear what followed over the sound of Apollo's voice cutting him off. I wish we could try again, but I think you should go. What? Leave Evangeline. A flash of pain crossed Apollo's face, hollowing his cheeks and scoring lines across his forehead. I don't want to hurt you. What's wrong? She took a step closer. Stop, he roared. You need to go. The prince pulled a golden arrow from the quiver at his back. Moonlight glanced off the tip as he held it into his fist. Evangeline stilled. What are you doing? Little fox. Get inside. Jax roughly shoved her behind him. Apollo's eyes turned red, the same lurid shade as when he grabbed her wrist. And then, Jax was yelling, Run! Evangeline still didn't understand what was happening, but she picked up her skirts and started a sprint. Only she wasn't quick enough. An arrow whooshed through the air and struck her thigh. She screamed and stumbled as the ball tore through her flesh. It hurt like a demon, turning everything else dull except for the pain, as she tried to make it back to the safety of the castle. Black quickly soaked her skirts as she staggered forward. Another arrow flew by, this one going wide, missing her arm and piercing a flower bush instead. Yet, she felt the terrible burn in her stomach, as if she'd been shot. Evangeline didn't know how she reached the door back to the wolf hall. Blood dripped from a deep gash in her shoulder, down her arm, to her palm. It was wet and sticky and it left a smear of red as she turned the handle and staggered into the warmth of the hall. Spots of light danced before her eyes. Her vision blurred as she looked down at the golden arrow protruding from a bloody tear on her skirts. She didn't see another arrow on her shoulder, but the wound hurt just as badly. And there was so much blood soaking through the white bootis of her dress. Her thoughts started to splinter, jumping between panic and pain and confusion as she fell into a wooden bench and bled all over its carefully embroidered cushions. I was screaming with dots of little red flowers, only now her blood was turning them into bigger, darker blossoms. She needed to get help. She tried to shove up from the bench, the leg that had been struck by the arrow buckled and she collapsed back down as more and more blood poured forward. Help! The word came out so softly she wasn't sure she said it out loud. Perhaps it was only her head. Around her, the castle was turning hazy. Her eyelids were heavy and now she was seeing more blinking light, bits of light around the murky edges of her vision. She closed her eyes just for a moment, just to test for a second. Evangeline? It sounded like Jack's voice. But he said her name. Not Little Fox. Jack said, never said her name. Then, he was murmuring something else, two more words she'd never heard. I'm sorry, he said, just before it all truly went dark.